I came into yeah. office, the conversation about you know um, our stolen artifacts has been on for more than twenty years, and oh. we're not making progress, right? And I, you know, when I, I when I got informed about this, the steps that have been taken so far, I found that there was a missing link. In, if you recall, um, the from the time of our uh, late father or by the hour, we had started these conversations. We had sent delegations to to, come, to see how these works can be returned. And most of the time, we've been rebuffed. You remember when the federal government in the 70s wanted the first act mask back for you know, from the British Museum and they refused. Thanks for clicking on this channel. Please subscribe to Afo's blog history and click on the notification button so that whenever we upload a new video you will be notified. Benin Artifacts, this man is a pathological liar. We at Afo's blog are here to expose Obasiki's lies. Please listen to our perspective on Obasiki's video. In this interview with Albert Abazi, Obasiki is confused. His explanation doesn't make any sense at all. Why did he refuse to support the Benin Royal Museum, instead he was building his museum Emowa? Invariably, he was challenging the Oba of Benin. On December 19, 2022, when German delegates came to Benin City, Obasiki said when addressing the press, I put pressure on those currently holding our prized pieces of art, that these works belong to us. What is most important is ownership. He stated that these works don't belong to those currently holding them, they belong to the Edo people in Nigeria. Our perspective at Efo's blog is the Benin artifacts belong to the Oba of Benin, not Edo people, Nigeria or the government. Obasiki should stop lying. Obasiki started to build the Edo Museum for West African Art, Emoa, Pavilion. Obasiki said although the conversation around the return of the stolen artifacts had been ongoing for over 12 years before his administration came into office, the decision to actively engage international partners catalyzed the process of the return which has now seen over 100 artifacts being returned to Nigeria. You heard what Obasiki said. This means that the effort of our ancestors, Oba Akenzua and Eridawa for over 12 years did not yield any result until he was now involved in the conversation, before they decided to return over 100 artifacts. We expected that as a Benin man, Obasiki would have appointed an Edo person to chair his private venture, Legacy Restoration Trust Limited in order to protect the Edo interest, and use it as an opportunity to train young Edo people in that field of museology, which is a component of the course at hand, if the primary intention of the proposed Emowa is to promote Benin cultural heritage, then is it not proper that an Edo person occupies such a position? We also learned that the proposed site of the Emowa was where Central Hospital was located. The most irritating thing is that he diminished a hospital for a museum. Another question is why is the executive director of the proposed Emowa an Igbo man, Mr. Philippi Hanacho? Obasiki, we would like to ask you and the Legacy Restoration Trust Limited, are there no Benins that are qualified for the position of executive director in the proposed Emowa that is to be established in Benin City? Godwin Obasiki is a pathological liar. He can fool some people sometimes, but he can never fool the people all the time. It is done on him that, those powers that were intoxicating him, have drastically reduced after the election. Some of his loyalists whom he trusted have left him. He is now humble. We at FO's blog will never pity him. He must be investigated by EFCC. He is a thief. When he was the governor, we tried to advise him, but he never listened to anybody. In this interview, Obasiki said when the British stole the artifacts, there was no Nigeria government or state government but now there is a government. What does Obasiki mean by that statement? But however, Obasiki is the worst evil that has ever befallen Benin Kingdom. Please listen to his lies. What is the fight? Is there a fight between your government and our royal palace? If there is a fight, what is the reason for the fight? Is it connected to the return? Because God, we have the opposition saying you want to steal artifact that doesn't belong to you. Some say you are dragging artifacts with the with the upper. 
Some said the artifacts, no, the, different, different things flying on the internet. Sir, what is the fight about? And if there is no fight, clear the air. What is the fight between the government and the palace as it regards artifacts? <laughs> Uh, how about, uh, you know, when you're in government, so many things, you hear so many things. Um, uh, I, I think first and foremost, where have you read from government or from Godwin Obataki that there is a fight or there's an issue with the palace or any traditional ruler for that matter? I, I, I need to, I need, I need evidence. I need somebody to show me something. Um, so, in mo most, like I've said in the past, it's in most people's conjecture, in their imagination. There is no fight I am aware of. And there can't be okay. one. I mean, and there's, because there's no basis for one. There's absolutely no basis for one. Um, certain things may have been misconstrued, misconstrued or mis I mean, uh, misunderstood in the past, but it's not the basis to say there is a fight. Um, I hear they talk about artifacts, uh, no artifacts, and I just laugh. Um, first, at least let's get certain facts right. When I came into yeah. office, the conversation about, you know, um, our stolen artifacts had been on for more than 20 years. And oh. we're not making progress. Right? And, I, you know, when I, I, when I got informed about this, the steps that I've been taking so far, I found that there was a missing link. In, if you recall, um, the from the time of our uh, late father, Obaidi Awa, we had started these conversations, we had sent delegations to, to, to see how these words can be returned. And most of the time, we've been rebuffed. You remember, even the federal government in the 70s, wanted the first act mask back for you know, from the British Museum and they refused. Mm. Um, and that conversation increased in the, uh, about 20 years ago. But what was missing was that it was between the curators, people who were holding some of these works in the different museums, and the federal government, and the, they were, you know, it wasn't, there, was, there was no state involvement. Mm. So the state then joined the conversation. So it became a three or four week conversation between those people holding these works, the federal government, the state government, and the palace. And thank wow. God we came in uh, because these people had formed themselves into a group called the Bidding Dialogue Group based out of you know, the UK. And these were mainly made up of curators who were holding our works. I then asked, I said, well, would you have a problem with the state government joining the conversation? They said, no. And we started attending the meetings. I then got the Attorney General of the state government to be involved with these conversations. And <clears throat> at one of those meetings, we then asked them, why what is the real issue why you don't want to return these works? They came up oh. with a series of explanations. Oh, you know, uh, we are holding these works under various structures. We are holding them for trusts. Or oh, they said, well, okay, so we, they, we don't have that authority to just deal with them the way we like. Uh, so it will take time. Then we then asked, okay, how many works are we talking about? How many works do you have? We, they went around, we were not clear whether they were 5,000, you know. Then we then, we then um, said, okay, so we don't know how many are. Well, maybe we should start with the first thing is to even find out how many and where they are. The second thing we discussed was, I mean, they came up with, well, was you see, many of these works are very fragile. If they're going to return them, um, they will have to be careful. How will they be kept? In what situation? Look at how we're keeping them here. If we give the pass them on, how will they be stored? How will they be kept? We say, well, look, that we can talk about. You know, if you return them, we'll work with you to create the same facilities that you have where you are keeping them in Nigeria, so that in a state, so that you can 
uh, return it, if that is an excuse. And they then talked about, oh, who will they return them to? So where, where did you take them from? You took them yes. from in the city. You should return them you know, to the place where you took them from. It doesn't matter who is the original owner of the work. I said, well, it doesn't really matter. Send them back to Nigeria because when you took them, there was no country called Nigeria. And now there's a country called Nigeria. So these were the eight years of conversations. But you could tell at that point that they were reluctant. They were looking oh. for excuses not to return the works. And that's why these conversations had dragged for that long. Then I then said, you know what? Um, 2018, I said, I now invite you to come to Edo State. We can't be having meetings about these artifacts abroad. Come to Benin and let's have this. So we invited them to Benin in 2018. Uh, more than 20 of them, 20 different curators. And then we then said, before they came in, we said, okay, we will move to work with you to build infrastructure in Edo so that that excuse of not having somewhere to store them properly and all that can be taken care of. Secondly, let us work with you to find out how many pieces, where they are, how they are stored, and how they got there. So let us know the provenance of these works. Anybody who is holding a piece of work from a dosage should be able to tell us how they got it. Um, and then when we came in 2018, uh, 2019, by the way, we then invited work within uh, architects to design, you know, a, to design what could be a museum. I mean, and have a discussion with them uh, to see if, how, you know, we could build something for them to bring it. Because our intention then was to take care of all the excuses that we're making and ensure that these works are returned back to where they come from. At least if not all of them, some of them. Uh, because if you see some of these works, they speak to you. They have a meaning to you. Unlike where they just displayed on the shelves or, you know, or in spaces in Europe. And then, you know, when you read some of the interpretations, the meaning of these works, they're just not in line with what we know them to be. Oh. So that is, that's the background. And we started the conversations. The conversations went on. Then you had the issue of COVID. And then you had the issue of the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, which then put pressure on a lot of these museums uh, globally to now begin to return you know, these stolen artifacts. So at no point in time we have we been in a disagreement with the palace. That is, we agreed that those works should be returned. We agreed that those works should come back to Benin and they should find their home back in Benin. For us, that was the reason why we went in as a government and that hasn't changed. So I don't know where this conversation about trying to take these works has come out of.